Hello, everybody. My name is Kyle Chambers, and I'm here today with Christine Rodriguez. She is the coach of Team Macho, and she's also a nine-time Walker World Champion. Thank you for joining the show today, Christine. Thank you. Great to be here. Absolutely. You're also the promoter of the Ocean Street Grand Nationals, and that's been going on for a long time, too. So I'm really excited to talk about your film career and your martial arts career and a lot of great topics to dive into today. Awesome. So explain what Macho Martial Arts is and how it got started. Well, Macho Martial Arts is a uh, martial arts company that makes protective equipment for martial artists. Um, their specialty is sparring, sparring gear. And, but they also make uniforms and belts and weapons and stuff like that. And uh, I think back in like 1990, um, I started working with the company and did a photo shoot with them for one of their catalogs. And then from there, the rest is history. I mean, I started working very closely with them, starting with uh, designing some gear for, for them and, you know, testing some gear and, and just uh, working very closely with the company. And then, I don't know, probably around five years ago, I said, you know, I'm out at all these tournaments and stuff and some great talent out there. And, I said, I'd really like to coach a team and have it sponsored by Macho Martial Arts. So um, that's where the whole thing started. And, you know, I started with my, my son, added my son on the team, Dante. And then, you know, the team just grew from there. And, you know, we're not a big team, but, you know, the people that I have on the team are, are very talented. Absolutely. Two people that caught my eye were the Molina siblings, Cody Molina. And then um, what's the um, what's the boy's name that's on your team? Michael. Michael. Cody and Michael Molina are both very talented, and they definitely turned some heads over the last few tournaments I've been watching at the night shows and stuff, and they're definitely doing yes. really well, very solid competitors. So there's definitely a bright future for you guys. Yes. Thank you. They're, they're doing awesome. I'm very proud of them. You're the promoter of the Ocean State Grand Nationals. Maybe explain how that tournament got started and how it's grown into the great NASCAR tournament it is today. Well, it's uh, 40 years running. Um, at the very beginning, uh, I co-promote the tournament with my husband, Don. And he's the one that was, you know, sole promoter at the beginning because I was only an orange belt when I competed at my first Ocean State 40 plus years ago. So <laughs> 42 years ago almost. And, um, you know, so then, at, of course, after we got married, you know, I, I helped co-promote the event and, you know, we just, uh, we make a good team as far as, you know, the jobs he does for the event and what I do for the event, but it has really grown from a high school gym tournament to a huge international tournament now. So, you know, a couple hundred competitors at the beginning and, but even at the Earlier years, we had celebrities like uh, George Chung and Cynthia Rothrock that attended the event and Bill Wallace. And so, you know, we kind of uh, uh, many, almost every single year, we bring in a big martial arts cele celebrity. We had um, Chuck Norris in. We had Shannon Lee, who's uh, Bruce Lee's daughter. We had Billy Blanks and Don Wilson and, and uh, you know, the, the list is super long. We had uh, Chuck Zito was going to be on our, you know, headline for the next one. And then we had COVID and had to just go virtual with the event. But we're really looking forward to being back in person in 2022. And uh, that'll be the weekend of April uh, 10th, that weekend. Um, so we're really looking forward to being back in person and, and seeing everybody and, and getting back to really having a great event. That's awesome. In Canada, there's not very many in-person events going on now because of COVID, but I've seen a lot of tournaments down in the States. You have, there's a lot of pro Mac and NASCAR terms. I've gone back to the in-person and really everyone's so grateful to be back in person from what I can see. And the night shows are electric because everybody's cheering for everybody. And it seems like a great atmosphere. So that's it awesome is. as well. It is. It's great. Uh, you know, we've had some crane tournaments locally and and we actually have one on, on uh, uh, September 12th coming up. And, you know, it's it's just great that we can get back and, you know, we just have to use caution, you, you know, be be careful. And, uh, you know, but it's a little different. I think, uh, 
you know, America was the last one. And, you know, it, well, the judges, everyone wore masks except for the two competitors, you know, the two fighters or the forms person that was up on the mat. But other than that, everyone wore masks and, you know, tried to be very cautious. Absolutely. It's important to keep everyone safe and have a good tournament and having that balance, the extra thing for the promoters to balance as well. Yes. <laughs> so you have been a part of several movie productions in many different roles, including The Next Karate Kid, Batman and Robin, and several other films. And so what is the most memorable moment from your film career? And explain how you kind of got into film as you went through your martial arts career. Well, in my career, I was just about the year I was retiring um, from competition. And uh, Mr. Pat Johnson, who's famous fight choreographer and director. Um, he's did all the Ninja Turtle movies, you know, other than the, like the very newest and all the Karate Kid movies. Um, and he's did some work on the Batman and Robin movies and, and just, you know, so uh, such a, a legend as far as a uh, stunt coordinator, a fight choreographer and director. Um, and he was just a good friend and, you know, never really talked to him much about doing film work or anything. We were just very good friends and, you know, had a lot of respect for him. And, and you know, he would go to some tournaments like the Battle of Atlanta and cheer me on when I was competing. And, you know, we would hang out and, uh, you know, he was filming the, the next Karate Kid that had Hilary Swank rather than Ralph, Ralph Macchio in it. And he had called me and asked me if I was interested that he needed someone to double her for the martial arts part. And, uh, you know, I thought it was really cool. And I was like, well, I never even thought about doing, you know, movie stuff or anything like that. So, you know, I met, went to Massachusetts because it was close to where I was. I, I live in Rhode Island and met Hillary, Hillary Swank and the director and everybody. And, and uh, from that point forward, it was, you know, you're hired and, and learning as I went, you know, on set, didn't know a lot of the lingo of, uh, you know, obviously caught in action. Uh, everyone knows what that is, but all the other lingo, I had no idea what I was doing. So, you know, I learned, learned as I went and, uh, you know, it was a great experience and, and that just kind of fed into other projects down the road. Um, you know, as far as I was working at WMAC Masters, and then I got called about the Batman and Robin movie about doubling for Alicia Silverstone. So I had flown out to California while I was filming down in Florida on my weekend off. I flew to California to meet meet the director and um, ended up getting hired for that. And, you know, still, still plugging along doing movie stuff to this day. Um, you know, working on a movie in September and October, uh, did, did a, two movies back in November. So, you know, just little stunt work here and there, you know, whether it's fight scenes or just actual stunts of, you know, falling or getting hit or getting knocked over and whatever it might be, you know, car stuff and, you know, so still doing it. And, you know, it's nice that we're getting more film work over here on the East Coast in the Boston area and some in Rhode Island. But, um, you know, New York's about it's doable, but it's like a four hour ride, um, you know, so and they do a lot of work in New York, but there's a lot right here in in New England. So that's exciting to get get involved and in, get back at, at it. It's awesome. There have been several martial arts artists that have actually gone on to do great um, film work as well. You see many, mother, many, many athletes like Micah Carnes and several athletes go on to, to do film work. You have Solange Olivier for Team IKEA and there's several like Enzo Bilog has done some stunt work as well. There's just a few from Team IKEA, but there's been several athletes from across the American martial arts circuit that have done stunt work and or film work. So it's great how in the extreme martial arts and even the traditional, how they both kind of come together because you have your competition when you have extreme martial arts, and then the athleticism really goes well when you get into the movie side of it as well. Right. It, it's a total different uh, aspect of the martial arts, you know, very, very different. And uh, a lot of it's very different from what we're taught of keeping things very straight and, and not telegraphing moves. And for camera, you know, it's totally different. And you telegraph moves and you 
they like to see the big wide techniques rather than you know a, a nice you know straight punch or a straight kick so it it is different. So you have to kind of like learn what works well for camera and it's a little different than actual street self-defense. That's cool. So you have been a part of Spartan Martial Arts for over um, 40 years and you have been part of NASCA and WACO, your nine-time WACO world champion in kickboxing. And you've seen a lot. You're on Team Paul Mitchell for, for several years competing with them. And now you're a coach and a promoter and you're in films. How do you think sport martial arts, not just in America, but all over the world has evolved over the years that you've saw it? I think it's definitely evolved a lot. I mean, when I first started, it was a very male dominant sport or, or uh, even if you weren't doing competition, just in the dojo itself was very male dominant. Not, not many women. Um, you know, we, uh, Right now, I, I would say my school is at least 50-50 male-female. If not, we probably have more uh, females in the school than males. And, uh, and I don't think it's just, you know, because of myself. You know, I, a lot of the male instructors here have, have more women um, in their classes than, than men sometimes. And so I think it's evolved that way as far as being more of an equal male-female um, sport to get into. And as far as the sport itself in competition, I've seen it really evolve. Um, traditional is still very strong, especially with it being in the Olympics now. So, you know, at least uh, the traditional part of the katas and everything is still very strong. And I'm glad to see that. But the extreme has really, you know, like back when I was competing to do, you know, I would do a an aerial, a, a no hand cartwheel into a split or, you know, a, a butterfly kick, or you, we would do tornado kicks, which was like a three six jump 360. And, and then all of a sudden, uh, Carmichael Simon and, and John Valera and people like that were doing five forties. And, and now, you know, my son does, uh, uh, 1120. I think it's, I think it's called, you know, he spins around like, I don't know how many times, like four times it throws a kick. It's, it's crazy. Um, and the same thing with the weapons. You see Jackson Rudolph throw it up and spin around three times and, and then catch his bow. And, and just um, the extreme part of the martial arts has definitely really evolved from what it used to be. So, and, and it's kind of like looking at gymnastics or, or things like sports like that years ago, what was amazing is now just routine. And, and you know, they just keep upping the bar and, and making things harder and harder all the time. So uh, I think it's uh, it's very entertaining and very athletic <laughs> to be able to do some of those things. Absolutely. One competitor on the female side who's done really well and she's going to have a really great career and she already has Noel Jellison. She's very intense and she has everything down in her efficiency. She's very, very phenomenal. And another person I'm really liking, she's actually my coach is Mary Amato. She's in the creative side of it and all the the creative athletes do but she uses her basics as her strong points and has a strong basics and the basics are still important but it's great to see people expanding and expanding on the traditional side to have a more more creative approach and have the mixture of the strong basics intensity into the creative has really made it really cool to watch when you have great athletes that are really really good at what they do it's really a phenomenal sight to see it is. I agree. Absolutely. So maybe talk about more about your karate school and how that opened up as well. Well, my husband um, was my instructor from day one. And back then he taught, um, he taught in the back of his house in a two car garage or whatever it was. And it was kind of like a private school. There were no signs or anything like that. And it was just something that he did as a hobby. Uh, he was a commercial shell fisherman. And then he taught karate as, as, as a hobby. And, and, you know, he just, he loved the martial arts. He had been in, involved for many, many years, a, a lot longer than I have. Um, you know, so I had started there. And then um, I guess when I started competing on the national circuit and traveling, uh, back around 1984, um, 
you know, it was expensive to travel and, and do all those things. And I was in college. And so, you know, he, he had said, well, you know, maybe we should, you should open a school and, you know, help, help with the expenses of all these tournaments and stuff. So that's when we opened the first commercial school. So he continued to teach uh, behind his house and I opened a commercial storefront school, um, you know, kept it the same name, Don Rodriguez Karate Academy. And uh, so we had two locations technically, even though one was more of a private school. And then in 1990, we ended up joining our two schools and just making one and making it, we rented out a much larger facility. And, uh, you know, so that's when we, I, I was around 1990 that we did that. So, um, you know, for a long time, we were, we were separated and teaching in two different schools and stuff. So, but the school's really grown. And right now we, we own our own building and, you know, we have a very large facility. So we're able to teach, you know, tiny tots and older kids at the same time, or we can teach a, a kid's class and a kickboxing class at the same time, or, you know, and some, sometimes we have three classes going on at the same time. So we have the, the capability of doing that and offering the classes at the same time. So people don't have to keep coming back and forth to the dojo for different family members. That's really great. You're able to offer several classes. So people that are that want to do different things they can and if you have four family members and they all want to do something different you can have them do something different because that uh, option is available to them as well right right and we we teach um his style is okiru kempo and that is uh you know my base style from from the start but i also teach kickboxing and i teach uh krav maga and so we do those two styles as well and then um, after I made my black belt, I started studying wushu, and that's what I was more known for in competition was the wushu forms rather than the hot style Kempo styles that, that I do. That's awesome. Another great thing about the sport karate side of it that I've noticed, I'm, I was in the WKF for four years, but it's really cool to see the Chinese forms, the wushu forms, and the hard style, the Japanese forms and Korean forms, and how they're very very different in the way they do things and you're able to see a vast difference but really see a wide variety of martial arts in these kinds of tournaments as well yes it, it's cool that they have a lot of those different divisions you know korean japanese okinawan they have the chinese kung fu divisions and um you know on top of the extreme creative and traditional um options as well so it is uh, nice to see all the different different uh, flavors of the martial arts out there. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being on this podcast episode today. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. This has been KC Sports Talk, the podcast with Kyle Chambers. <laughs>